السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Mudaffar is with you and we are going to continue our lecture uh, sequently with the use of complete uh, dangers. Well, the topics for today is flabby ridges and obvious tissue. You know that the flabby ridges are the, the flabby ridges are the are those ridges uh, which shows a little evidence of underlying supporting bone and is mostly seen in case of uh, those who wear complete danger uh, against uh, lower natural teeth. Uh, and the most li uh, likely cause of these fibrous tissue, it could be excessive occlusal load, or it could be uh, due to unstable closer uh, relationship elsewhere in the mouth. Well, in extreme cases, the patient has, uh, uh, as I said, a complete against mandibular and tear teeth and, uh, the and the phenomena or the syndrome is called uh, the Kelly syndrome. And in most of cases, there's a component loss of vertical dimension and there's a change in the facial aesthetic and if it's if the case is so severe uh, surgical intervention may be required to improve uh, the stability of the complete uh, upper danger Well, another topic is the upuse tissue. You know that what's meant by upuse tissue, it's uh, any tissue that have undergone deformation or disruptive changes due to denture inaccuracy or maybe due to faulty denture wearing habits. And you know that the causes of abuse tissue, uh, of abuse uh, tissue could be due to systemic factor, such as in uh, advancing age, or maybe due to endocrine nutritional defici deficiencies, uh, neoplasia, immunosuppression, and wide spectrum antibiotic. could be to local factors, as you know, in your PDF, uh, maybe due to a topical or inhaled uh, corticosteroid or antimicrobials, or uh, those who are uh, eating mostly carbohydrate-rich diet, or deficient in oral hygiene, or faulty wearing habit of danger, or could be due to disharmony of occlusion and uh, vertical dimension alteration. Well, the important thing is the treatment plan and the recovery program for those patients. But uh, the most important thing, you must educate the patient to remove the denture from the patient's mouth uh, a few days, 20, uh, 48 to 72 hours, before making any new impression. But if the patient uh, cannot remove his danger, you have an optional procedure such as uh, uh, placing a tissue conditioner material. Well, uh, the, 
the treatment program for the obvious tissue, uh, first of all, you should detect and correct any pressure area by means of uh, a pressure indicating paste. And also, you may correct the adaptation of the danger to the underlying tissue by using uh, tissue conditioner material. And this material, as you know, should be changed every uh, 72 hours because the plasticizers gonna leach from this material and gonna uh, and it became hard and annoying to the patient. And also, uh, it will lose its conditioning effect. And also, you should correct any occlusal this uh, dish, uh, any occlusal disharmony by means of clinical remounting procedure. And if the condition is a maxillary denture against natural, uh, you may relieve the contact. Uh, you may relieve the contact between the natural teeth and the artificial teeth by, especially if the vertical dimension is lost. You may increase the vertical dimension by using an acrylic, acrylic duff adapted to the posterior uh, teeth and uh, ask the patient uh, to close into centriculation at uh, this new vertical dimension. So by restoring the correct vertical dimension, you're going to restore the correct position of the condyle and also you gonna eliminate uh, the load on the anterior segment of the denture well well we are going to shift to another object which is the residual ridge reduction and as you know that longitudinal studies of the bulk and outline of edentulous residues in complete denture wares demonstrated a continuous loss of bone tissue after tooth extraction and placement of complete dentures. Also, the reduction is a sequel of alveolar remodeling uh, due to altered uh, functional uh, bone stimulus and it follow a chronic progressive and irreversible course that often result in severe impairment of prosthesis and restoration of uh... well the process of remodeling is particularly important uh, an area of thin cortical plate such as the buccal and the labial part of the maxilla and the lingual part of the mandible so as a consequence the mandible will be uh, what looks like a pseudo glass 3 and the maxilla will shrink Well, during the first year after tooth extraction, uh, the reduction of the residual ridge height uh, in mid sagittal and mid sagittal plane is about two to three millimeters for the maxilla and uh, four to five millimeters uh, for the mandible. Well, in the mandible, the annual rate of reduction is about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters, and it is generally four times less in the maxilla. However, intra and individual variation are very common. Well, some proposed uh, etiological factor of uh, residual rate reduction. It could be due to anatomical factors such as uh, a severe reduction of the mandible due to a small gonial angle, uh, that the angle between the body and the remus of the mandible, and also uh, depend on the type of bone. As you know, cortical bone will resolve 
for resort is lower than the cancellous one and also the size and shape of uh, rigid ridges you know that uh, well formed and broad ridges uh, show less resorption than narrow knife edge ridges and also uh, it is uh, the resorption it is more important in the mandible versus the maxilla and also a yellowplasty predisposed to bone resorption and if you want to make a, an immediate danger and you do an alveoloplasty, expect more resorption on those patients than the conventional complete danger. The metabolic and systemic factors such as uh, a blood secretions, dietary deficiencies, and radiation therapy, also menopausal causes, and osteoporosis uh, recently it has low bone mineral content and osteoporosis changes may predispose to more rapid residual risk reduction and particularly in the maxilla than in the mandible well the me the mechanical or prosthodontic factors could be due uh, to time dependent uh, mechanical factors such as functional and, uh, and parafunctional occlusal forces. Well, the presodontic factors could be long term wearing of dentures, improper reconstructed denture, improper vertical dimension, and, correct, and correct centric non balanced occlusion, porcelain teeth or anatomic teeth, fall to impression and immediate uh, danger. Well, uh, the consequences of residual bone reduction, uh, as you know, uh, loss of the depth of the and width of the sulcus with displacement of the muscle attachment closer to the cross, uh, sorry, closer to the crest of the residual ridge and also loss of vertical dimension and uh, reduction of the lower uh, face height and anterior rotation of the mandible and, uh, and an increase in the relative uh, prognathic appearance. ...of uh, residual bone reduction uh, may be divided into prosthetic management without surgical intervention and management with surgical intervention. Well, regarding the management with, uh, without uh, surgical intervention, I mean only by prosthetic means. So we have different impression technique in these cases. For the first technique, it is called uh, the butterfly impression technique. So what you need in this technique, first of all, you should, you should select uh, a suitable uh, metal stainless steel tray that could be adapted. So you will uh, you make uh, a special tray, sorry, a metal tray that you bend it in the some lingual area to you make the lingual flanges flat so as to cover the sublingual crescent area and then you make your impression by uh, alginate impression material and on the result cast you make uh, a special tray without handle you just make an acrylic and you make an occlusal rim uh, as you are going to, uh, to do your impression in a closed mouth technique you make an uh, upper occlusal rim and the lower occlusal rim and this rim going to simulate uh, the position and the height of the anterior and posterior teeth you insert these rims on the patient mouth 
and the border are adjusted so that uh, the lingual flange and the sublingual uh, crescent area are in harmony with the adjacent tissue uh, in harmony with the adjacent tissue during rest and function and the impression of choice here is the tissue condition material you should apply three applications uh, for each application there is a the time between each application is 8 to 10 minutes. I mean that the first application you apply it in the patient mouth and ask the patient to close and do muscle. Uh, you should just swallow carefully and re release his muscle and smile and do functional movement. And after 10 minutes, you apply another application and the patient also closes mouth and doing the same technique and the third layer it may be either a tissue conditioning material or you can use a silicone impression material so that the end result of this technique it is a tissue placing effect which is very thick and confirming buccal borders and relatively thick lingual and sublingual crescent area which uh, cover the maximum possible basal seed and actually within the functional limit of the adjacent tissue. Well, the second technique, it is the... Technique, it is the dynamic impression technique. You know, and this technique is used to record the range of uh, muscle action as well as the spaces into which the denture can be extended without, uh, without uh, displacement. So, in this technique, uh, you make a primary impression with alginate impression material. And the final impression after making a special tray, which has this, uh, which has the three stoppers uh, at the inner surface, and also it has a three rest area from acrylic at the dorsal surface of the acrylic, one in the anteriors, and two on the posterior, one on the right, and one on the left and you insert this tray and ask the patient to close till the upper artery are in contact with the rest that have been that have been constructed on the lower tray and then you uh, the, the material here is a thin mix of alginate and pressure material uh, the patient is closed and you he should uh, touch by his tongue the the anterior rest area and he will swallow uh, several times and the end impression will uh, cover the maximum possible basal area and it is in harmony with the uh, adjacent uh, moving tissue. The third technique it is the fibrous and employed unemployed posterior mandibular ridge impression technique and the and this uh, ridge is characterized by a presence of thin mobile thread like ridge which is essentially fibrous in nature and uh, after taking uh, primary impression you construct a special tray and you adjust it and you make impression with a, with a green stick tracing compound and you do the ball and you do your border molding uh, it is a full coverage a tracing compound and after you do your border and by using a lacron carver 
you remove uh, the tracing at the crystal area and you make holes by a small fissure there at the crest of the ridge and then you check it again by applying pressure inside the patient mouth the patient should feel no discomfort and the end impression by injecting some light body uh, silicone material on the buckle and lingual shelf of the green And the fourth technique is the flat atrophic mandibular ridge uh, covered by atrophic mucosal impression. Uh, uh, and these ridges are characterized by fold of atrophic or, or non keratinized tissue uh, overlying the ridge. So uh, McCord and Tyson describe this technique which is uh, spe specific for this uh, clinical situation. And the impression medium here is, a, is an admix of three parts by weight of red impression compound to seven part by weight of green stick. Uh, you, you put a, a hot water in, uh, in a bowl and you mix uh, these uh, materials together and you knead it well uh, with your fingers and then you apply it in the tray and do the mortar molding and take the impression uh, the, philo the philosophy behind this impression well the last technique is the functional impression technique it is used uh, it is used when when in some occasion the denture may exhibit looseness not arising primarily from the retention problem but actually because of uh, localized area of the prosthetic management with uh, surgical intervention we have many procedure like the vis And the third technique is the distraction implant by using a distraction. But the most uh, logical uh, procedure is to use, uh, as you know, the osseointegrated integrated implant. It is used in case of Split. Now, a new topic is the indirect sequelae of, of wearing uh, complete dentures. First of all, is uh, atrophy of the, mystery, of the masticatory muscle. You know that the maximal biting and also the stroke. But uh, Studies say that if you save some, well, also studies uh, studies show that in complete adventurous patient, uh, a placement of implant is usually followed by. Well, the nutritional status and masticatory and masticatory function, you know. Well, it is also reported that the principal causes of malnutrition among older denture wearers could be poor general health, which is characterized by poor absorption, intestinal metabolic and catabolic disturbances, or uh, anorexia. Well, the control of sequelae with the use of complete denture uh, is uh, first restoration of the partial so an important thing that the edential has been because it, it has been shown that in younger patient if you do well, the precaution that are going to be given to the patient 
and also the patient uh, should be motivated to practice a proper wearing habit so as to remove the danger at night 